This is my hour. My hour. Hi there. I'm Bryce Tomlinson from NewDepthMedia.com, and today I'm going to build a shock mount mic boom. Some of you who have worked in film production may be familiar with this. Some of you who have done some short films or sketch videos or something like that, you may be familiar with that. Those of you who have made uh, commercials and things like that, uh, a mic boom is used when you want to put the mic over your head, usually, and have the mic pointed down at you and have it out of the shot. And this way, the person who's holding the mic can be standing off of the frame out of frame and then not interfere with the shot. The advantage of having a shock mount boom is of course that you can have the boom operator have his hands all over it and whatnot and usually it will not make a sound even in the final recording. It actually works surprisingly well and thanks to the guys over at Film Riot, it's really cheap. If you want to check out the original video that this is based on, click this link right here and you'll be taken right there to Film Riot and you'll see the original video by Revision 3 Studios that um, shows how this is done. If you want to build this handy dandy gadget, you'll find just about every item you'll need for this project at your local home improvement store. And I've included links in the description of this video for those who'd like to order the parts online or just get the exact item numbers. Since my spin on this shock mount has a couple of twists that differ from the original Film Riot version, let's go over the shopping list. The first thing you will need will be a 2 inch PVC T joint from the plumbing section. Item number 2 will be a 2 inch to 1 half inch threaded bushing. This is the first difference since Ryan originally used two different bushings to bring the 2 inch T joint down to 1 half inch threads. I found this single bushing that does the whole job. This makes the project both a little easier and a little cheaper. Thirdly, I used the same all purpose cement which I found right next to all the PVC pipe stuff in the plumbing section. Be sure you get the stuff that says it can be used for PVC. Number four on the list are the ever important GB small easy cable clips used in the original project, which I found in the electrical section next to all the other cable clamps and ties. Our second key difference in our shopping list is that we're not going to use the zip tie strips that Ryan used. We're actually going to use the screws that came with the easy cable clips instead. I had originally tied it with the zip ties, but no matter how much I tightened it up, the clips would eventually pop right off under the tension of the rubber bands but we'll come back to the rubber bands in a minute. Number five on our list is a pole of some kind. I chose to use the same light bulb changer that was used in the Film Riot version. I had originally used a broomstick that I covered in black gaffer tape and it worked really well, but I eventually went back and bought the light bulb changer pole because it's longer and it extends to get really long. But because it extends, I couldn't cover it with flat black gaffer tape as it would just jam up the sections. So that brings us to number six on the list, and that's paint. If you're just making home movies and don't care what it looks like, then you can definitely skip this step because it'll work just as well even if it doesn't look quite as nice. I went to the paint section and asked one of the pros there to recommend a good paint that would work on both the PVC and the pole. So they told me to buy this paint made for plastics and because I'd be painting over the paint that was already on the pole, I should use a good plastic primer too. Unfortunately at the time they didn't have a flat black paint for this project, but as of now they have a pretty wide selection of primers and paints including semi-gloss, black paint, and everything from white to dark brown primer, which means unlike me, you should be able to prime your light changer with a darker color, making it easy to cover in black paint. You'll see in a minute how I struggled with the black paint to make it cover the white primer I had to use at the time. Well, praise the Lord for progress, right? Oh yeah, did I mention the rubber bands? Those are item number seven on our shopping list. This is the one item I could not find at Home Depot. And in fact, I was told by the friendly guys at the HD that they don't even carry rubber bands. So I found this ball of rubber bands at my local department store. As for tools, you'll need a drill with a small enough bit to fit through the holes of the easy clips and a little smaller in diameter than the screws that come in the package. You want a Dremel with a grinding wheel or a metal file or something you can use to blunt the ends of the screws after you put them into the T-joint. Next, you'll need a flathead screwdriver or a driver bit for fastening the screws and a couple of wire coat hangers that you don't mind destroying in the name of good filmmaking. Okay, on to the build. First, we take a little bit of the cement and add it to the bottom end of the 2-inch T-joint. 
Next, we insert the bushing with the threaded end facing out of the hole. It might be a little tight, so make sure you squish that thing all the way in there. Now we need to set it down and let it dry for a bit. In my case, it took about a half hour before it was ready for me to handle. This stuff cures pretty quick, but don't rush it because you don't want to screw up your project. You're all done with the glue, so make sure you close it up and put it away somewhere safe. Once the glue's dry, it's time to attach our easy clips. Start out by doubling up a couple of rubber bands around one side of the T-joint, then insert your easy clips in a way that sort of ends up shaped like a cross or an X across the end of the T. In my case, once I had them in position, I just went ahead and drilled the holes right through the easy clips. Some might recommend marking the holes first, then removing the clips and drilling into the marks. And I would have to agree that that would probably be a safer way to do this. Nobody wants a trip to the hospital over a DIY filmmaking project. Once the holes are drilled, it's time to fasten your easy clips down with the screws and remove the rubber bands. Repeat this process for the other side so you'll have four clips attached with screws on each side of the T-joint. But wait, those screws are pretty pointy. Ouchie! If you were to get your finger or your hand hung up on that, it would hurt pretty bad and it would probably do some real damage. So we're going to clean those up with a little Dremel work. You can use a metal file or a small grinding wheel on your drill, but I just love my Dremel. So I hooked up my grinding wheel to it and went at it until I had the screws really filed down pretty far. I didn't grind down all the way, but you can if it makes you feel better about it. I just wanted to get the sharp ends gone and soften up the edges a little bit. This only takes a few minutes and having not been sent to the doctor for stitches after using this shock mount a few times, I can tell you this step is really worth it. So do it. Now it's time to prime and paint. To hang up my shock mount, I took apart an old wire coat hanger and fashioned a little bit of a twisted loop at the end, making it just small enough that I could squeeze it through the hole at the bottom of the T-joint. As I was painting, I tried to make sure I used very light coats because I didn't want a bunch of runs all over the shock mount or my extension pole. Lots of thin coats are much better than one or two heavy coats and it dries faster and more evenly anyway. Make sure you get the inside as well as the outside, but leave the threads alone since you'll be screwing the shock mount and the pole together. A good covering of primer and then a few thin coats of black. Make sure you let each coat dry completely before applying more paint or proceeding to the next step. Take the time to do this right and you'll be really happy. I did mine quite a while back. I take this gadget everywhere and the paint still looks as awesome as ever. Although I am thinking about repainting it in flat black now that they have that kind of paint available. Remember, anytime you're taking a break from painting and when you're done, clean out your paint nozzles by following the instructions on the can, usually by turning the can upside down and spraying for a second or two to get the excess material out of the nozzle. Once everything's all dry, it's time to put it together. Double up one or two of the rubber bands and run them from one clip to another one on the opposite side of one end of the T. Repeat the process for each pair of clips on both ends of the T, forming a cross or X pattern on each end of the T with the rubber bands. Screw your shock mount onto the end of your new boom pole and you're ready to rock. I made some small sleeves on the end of the broomstick pole using gaffer tape so that I could run the cable through it to further isolate my mic from any handling of the pole and so that I could attach a wireless transmitter to the pole if I needed to. This is totally optional, but it can come in handy in different situations. Now attach your mic by threading it through the center of the rubber bands and they will act as a buffer to isolate your mic from most of the noises that your boom operator will make handling the pole. When operating the boom pole, hold the pole high enough to keep it out of the frame of the camera while still keeping the microphone pointed at the subject's mouth and as close to them as possible without appearing in the frame of the shot. For more great tips on how to use this awesome boom pole, be sure to check out the original Film Riot episode about the $25 boom mic pole. See you next week. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you can help me out by clicking those like and favorite buttons down below. And if you enjoy seeing tech tutorials, reviews, and more, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. I hope you do. Also, if you have any questions or ideas to contribute, make sure you tell me about it in the comments below. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time on Mind Power.